Hey guys, Matt Samoski here, and this in front of you is a 2020 BMW 740i. I borrowed this car from my friends over at Napleton Acura here in Elmhurst, Illinois, and this is a used vehicle. And the reason I wanted to show you this car is because it's the flagship model of BMW. It's the ultimate driving machine, and it's also a luxury sedan. Now, I don't even know if I can say this in the same sentence, but this is the entry level flagship model. How's that possible? Because BMW makes several different versions of the 7 Series. The 740 is the base one. This is the inline three liter engine with 335 horsepower then they also make the 745 with the e-drive electric drive they also make the 750 which is the eight cylinder the 760 a massive v12 which is the rolls royce engine and they also make the b7 alpina which is crazy 600 horsepower in 3.2 seconds i believe or something crazy like this zero to 60. but this particular car, the original MSRP, was just under $100,000. And thank you for depreciation, because right now, this car is selling for under $60,000. And it's only got 11,000 miles on it. Anyways, this is a fairly base model. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look around this car. I'm going to take you around and show you the different features that are available on this car. I'm also going to show you the trunk the engine, we're gonna jump on the inside. I'm gonna show you some features on the interior of this vehicle, the back seat, and then we're gonna take it for a spin. Now, a couple of fun facts about 7 Series. So BMW has been making 7 Series since the 70s. 77 was the first year when the 7 Series was introduced. But my personal favorite 7 Series was the late 90s, the 97, BMW 750 and James Bond, Tomorrow Never Dies, a beautiful BMW. Also, Transporter. Transporter. Remember that movie? That 735 IL. Sticks of Jason Statham or Frank Martin, you know, driving this car like crazy. One of my favorite cars that BMW made. So, if you want to take a look around, follow me. All right, so let's take a look at the exterior of this car. First of all, you gotta notice that it's massive. Not only you gotta notice the massive size of the car, but also the massive size of the grill. And this is the new uh, grill for 2020. And I know BMW's gotten a lot of criticism for it, that it's too big, that, you know, it kind of looks ugly. It doesn't bother me a bit. I think it's kind of cool looking. It's also functional. Uh, that grill fins open up to let more air inside and uh, cool off the engine if needed. So when you look at the styling on this car also, you notice that uh, chrome hockey stick uh, kind of trim on the side um, that also adds to the sportiness. Now this particular one sits in the 18 inch wheels, so they're not sport wheels, uh, but they're very comfortable. I mean, they leave enough um, meat on the tires so you don't feel all the bumps and stuff like this continuing in the back you can see the massive back door of this vehicle and um, that's what the question is whether it's a driver's car or whether it's a car that you need to be driven in so continuing in the back um, big lamps tail lamps led lamps on bmw uh, badging 740 X drive, which means it's an all wheel drive. Also, I'm gonna point out, um, not sure if you're gonna be able to see that, but this part right here also lights up. So, when the lights are on, I'm gonna try to make a separate shot of it. Uh, when the lights are on, the whole panel lights up, so it kind of uh, makes it a one lamp design. Just kind of curious how much would it be to replace one. Anyways, nice big uh, exhaust tips. Nicely incorporated in the bumper. Again, this is not a sport package vehicle, so you don't have uh, any sporty fake or real intakes. But nice clean lines, even though 
it is a base model like I said it actually looks pretty sporty it's got that aggressive stance on it that adds on to the sportiness of the vehicle now it's also huge this thing is like over 200 it's like 207 inches long so that's 17 feet that's bigger than most of the bedrooms in my house that's crazy and people drive it now it weighs over 5,000 pounds and it's powered by an inline six engine which we're gonna get to in just a second just kind of curious of how a small engine like this is gonna move that heavy piece of machinery but you know let's take a look around and while we're in the back let's pop the trunk and see how much room it's got all right so looking at this trunk when it's open i mean it's massive size you can fit tons of luggage in here and still have room for more luggage or whatever else you want to put in here let's check out what else is in here um, does this open up no this looks like a fixed floor here is where your first aid kit should be um, and there is a pass through so in case you are a skier you can put your skis in here or if you're doing remodeling on your house maybe you can slip in a few two by fours in there as well anyways close you can use this button right here or you can basically just close it yourself or you can use the button on the remote a couple things to point out before i actually get inside of this vehicle is a let's check out the sound of the closing door just like most of the German cars or all of the German cars that I know that is a very solid sound now this car comes also equipped and it's a standard equipment with it with the soft, soft closed door self closing door so if you don't close the door all the way this mechanism will basically just pull it right in so that is a standard equipment on this uh, BMW flagship model now when we looked at the trim on the side before too you can see that this is an actual uh, air flow that goes from um, behind here but it goes from the very front of the car that sucks the air right here and cools off the wheel well so the wheels and the brakes and all that stuff doesn't get too hot anyways beautiful light design and those are LEDs those are the BMW LED lights standard equipment on the car they also have the laser lights that are available on the higher-end models but also when you look at this controversial grill what some people like it some people don't I personally don't mind it at all if you look at all the big and expensive vehicles you have Rolls Royces with the uh, huge grills well maybe that's what they got the idea since it's the same company but um, this grill actually those fins open up in case uh, the engine gets too hot just to allow more air to get in and cool off the engine great so before we jump in and uh, kind of go over some of the features on the interior of this car let's take a look at the door so right here on top you have a Harman Kardon speaker uh, it's part of the base sound system on this car it hasn't been upgraded um, you know brushed aluminum door handle a lot of this is plastic though so it's not brushed aluminum but it still looks pretty cool it's got that wood grain and it has the which I don't think it's leather but it's kind of a leather looking wrapped uh, door uh, sides in here so there's your uh, window controls and the mirror controls and right here is where you um, open the trunk and all these buttons are for the different memory settings uh, for your seat now the seat which is pretty cool it's a 20 
way adjustment so you can adjust the seat any which way you want to make it comfortable and oh, if you want to uh, try to um, do it you can also put it as far as one of the memory settings so you don't have to do it every time that you uh, get in the car what else is here on the side of the steering wheel there is your light controls and also the side um, lamps that are this vehicle is equipped with and as you can see this is a base version so there is uh, empty spaces for a couple more options that you can have on this as well let's take a look on the inside so obviously the first thing you see when you get in the car is the steering wheel and this is a standard bmw steering wheel um, multi-function steering wheel that has some nice brushed aluminum on the sides and that's got controls for uh, the screen that you have in front of you which is all digital dashboard just like most of the cars have right now um, it's kind of cool looking it actually has the speedometer on one side and the tachometer on the other side and they kind of go in different directions like they go towards each other versus um, you know away from each other so you also see this little limit sign if you can see that that's your speed limit uh, warning so if you are driving on the road and you go over speed limit that little sign will start flushing um, you can customize this screen and you can have different options on it you can have your radio stations you can have your um, data since uh, refueling that type of stuff um, so it's fully customizable just like most of the modern vehicles are Moving on to the side right here, there is another screen. And right now we have it in the rear view camera. Now this one doesn't have a 360 view. Um, it does have, um, however, a pretty decent camera that comes equipped with this car. And let's see if we can change the view on it a little bit. So, Again, this is fully customizable, and as you can see, I'm actually going. Okay, this one's I got the front camera too, which you can choose. Um, so you can see what's going on in the front, and you don't run over stuff. It's got the automatic parking, backup assistant, um, and it's got the camera image and settings in here. Um, let's take a look at the media. Um, pretty self-explanatory you got the XM radio that's on the screen right now um, you also have the AM FM um, so what's very uh, different about this one too as you can see you still have a CD player which are becoming obsolete in a lot of the cars right now uh, but BMW still keeps it map here's for your navigation this is a decent sized screen. I think it still loses big time to Mercedes-Benz, UB, and, uh, user experience, so MBUX, uh, where you have those two massive 12.3 inches screens. Uh, these are much smaller, much more basic. Um, and from what I understand, you don't get a bigger screen. If you get a better equipped version, it might have more features on it though. So everything is controlled um, either via voice or um, you have some auxiliary buttons right at the bottom here that control um, your climate control, your radio, your um, heat, uh, seat heaters, your main control gear shifter is right in the middle where it should be kind of this is what I like about uh, sports cars. Um, I like the gear shifter to be right in the middle. Uh, maybe I'm an old school, maybe I'm a purist, but um, it's fun. It's, uh, I guess it's the new times where you have the gear shifters either on the steering wheel or buttons or you know different types of uh, dials to turn the gears. But I like this gear shifter a lot. You have your electronic parking brake, um, that little uh, 
and mouse or the little controller right here this is where you control most of um, the features and you can actually see all of those on the screen above um, now you can also change different driving modes you can turn off your traction control which is kind of cool because it's right here uh, so everything it's kind of characteristics of a sports car is right in the middle because you can switch your driving modes too from sport comfort eco pro um, you can do the adaptive mode where the car will adjust to your driving somewhat uh, parking brakes you can turn your camera you can either even lower and raise the car up from right in the middle here so let's take a look at the screen and see what the driving modes we change the driving modes what does it do so we put it in sport driving mode you have different options you have standard individual and you can configure individual it's the standard um, and that basically is going to again change the characteristics of the vehicle stiffen the suspension a little bit lower it uh, for sports mode and be more responsive as far as acceleration and performance so this is basically the front of the vehicle um, it's not crazy fancy now it, it is luxurious but comparing let's say to an S class it is lacking some of that luxury feeling now this is your engine stop and start button of course um, the cool thing about it too um, it is uh, this vehicle standard comes equipped with two sunroofs one for the driver and one for the passenger and they're actually a decent size roofs um, I think you can see it from here but when I get into the back seat I'm gonna be able to show that to you and you can open them close them of course from uh, the front I don't think there's controls in the back which is kind of strange if you have somebody that you're driving and have no controls to do that well let's see what else is cool in here what's this oh here's your cup holders um there's your usb i thought it was a lighter but that's just a 12 uh, volt adapter there's your wireless charging for your phone you can close it halfway or you can close it all the way if you'd like um what else we have here typical all okay, so let's take another look in here so this is the middle console and you open it by simply pushing that button not very big to be honest with you you can maybe put a phone in here and some spare change uh, but not huge um, I would expect a little bit more from a big car like this um, anyways last look at the dash and we're gonna move on to the backs. All right, so we looked at the uh, door, but I also wanna show you and point out the seat adjustments. Like I said, it's a 20-way adjustable seat, and you can adjust it any which way you want. The lumbar support, the uh, uh, up and down and sideways, and whichever other way you wanna adjust it. But, since it is a since this is a luxury sedan and the flagship let's take a look at the back seat because it's massive and this is with my front seat adjusted to the way that i would be normally driving this car let's take a look how much leg room there is and see what else is inside of this car too All right, looking at the side door again, at the side of the door again, it's kind of a strange uh, place, but I guess it's uh, it's working to where the you can grab the 
door handle. This is where you open it. This is where you pull the door. And hey, look at this. It has an ashtray. I didn't even know that that was a thing anymore. Most of the manufacturers removed ashtrays from their cars years ago. And this one still has an ashtray. Kind of a cool thing if you're smoking. What else is here? Oh, there is a sunshade in the back. And there is a sunshade for the roof. Well, these are just the basic controls. Now, it's got the rear heated seats, not ventilated. Um, so this is just controls for the um, climate control. You have the settings for the rear, different uh, fan speeds, seat heaters, and here is a space for what? Here's your other two USB-C ports as well as the power outlet. Okay. But taking a look at the leg room. So when you take a look, the leg room is a lot. So that makes me wonder, is this the car to drive or is this the car to be driven? And I can certainly feel very well sitting in the back seat. And that's if the driver was six feet tall. I have probably another seven, eight inches from my knees to the front seats. That's huge. That's probably the biggest in its class. I don't remember that being that much in the Mercedes-Benz or the Audi. Area. All right, so before I pop the hood open, I hope you can see it from here. And I'm gonna do a walk around with it just so you can take a look at this big scoop type of, in order to incorporate that grill, I guess BMW had to raise this hood so it made it more bold more aggressive and it fits in really nicely with that grill not sure again why all those people are complaining about it but again you know it's everybody's personal preference i guess but i'm gonna pop this open and we'll see what hides beneath it right so what's in here can't see too much only that it is a twin power turbo engine and this one is actually an inline six cylinder twin power turbo engine 335 horsepower um, it is a four matic and according to bmw will get you going from zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds so again it's pretty impressive for as little horsepower as it has the weight of the car um, i can't wait to take it on the road and see what it can really do so if you're ready let's get inside take it for a spin all right so finally i'm behind the wheel of this car i'm really excited uh, interesting thing it says check control close message caution components and fluids hot let engine cool down before opening hood Lose ca use caution when opening so that's nice that they care about the drivers awesome well let's start it up and uh let's see if this thing can do 4.7 0 to 60 kidding i don't think there is a road here where we can do that but uh, at least i can get the feel and see how this vehicle handles in the real life situation so When driving when you look outwards you can certainly see that hood and very little visibility from the front so that front camera comes really handy so so far it feels rather large but it doesn't feel heavy For a 5,000, over 5,000 pounds vehicle, it doesn't, it's not overwhelming. It's not like you can't 
feel that this car is too heavy for the engine. The engine is quite responsive, by the way, and I'm in comfort mode. Um, I'm going to try to get on a little bit faster route to see if I can open it up maybe a little bit, obviously within the reason, um, and see if I can switch it to a sport mode. But so far, quiet. That's one thing, very quiet. Um, the ride is comfortable. It's nice and smooth. It's stiffer than on the Mercedes, even in the comfort mode. Um, and it's just about the same as on the uh, Audi A8 that I've driven as well. So let's switch that to a sport mode. You can't really hear the engine growl or anything like this, which would be a, a nice feature, but I guess it is the base entry level sedan, so it might not have that available. Entry level for a hundred grand, huh? Okay, let's see. Oh, wow. Holy cow, this is from the inline six engine? Holy cow, this is responsive. I I can't even imagine of what the 750 or 760 or B7 would feel like. This is very responsive. You don't feel like you're driving a 5,000 pound vehicle. It's more like a sports car. It's almost like anything in the back of you didn't exist. Wow, this is the ultimate driving machine. BMW, great job of tuning this engine. And really, you can fool a lot of people with just the amount of horsepower that it claims it has, which, you know, obviously it has 335 horsepower. There's no doubt about it. But the way that this engine is tuned, let's see. Whoa. Does have a little bit of that growl as you get into RPMs. But overall, great acceleration, great experience. Definitely one thing I want to check out when I'm sitting at the light here about to make a legal U-turn um, is the, the turning radius of this vehicle. Um, as you know, we've checked out the bands and that was awesome. Um, so let's see if this one is similar to Mercedes. So let's check it out. That's very tight, actually. That is very nice. And there we go again. Can't help it. Can't have BMWs. Alrighty, let's take it back to the dealership now. <laughs> so we had some equipment issues, to say the least. However, um, I hope you were able to kind of see it or maybe hear it as far as the acceleration of this car is awesome it's great um, it definitely lives up to the ultimate driving machine uh, slogan that bmw has um, if i were to complain about something a little bit i don't think is as luxurious and it doesn't have as many features as mercedes-benz um, which is its probably main competitor um, which in this segment there's only a handful uh, when you think about it by the way talking about the segment of these cars I mean really the large luxury sedans I mean they're limited right now to um, BMW 7 Series Mercedes-Benz S-Class which has always been the flagship um, Audi uh, A8 and um, as far as the Asian and Japanese or so Japanese is Lexus, Asian, Korean is the uh, Genesis, um, but I don't think anything comes close to the big three, which is the BMW, Mercedes, and uh, um, uh, and and, and uh, Audi. Uh, maybe Lexus does. Um, however, as far as the domestics, the um, Cadillac has uh, a large sedan that's also could be a competition but I heard they're phasing out their sedans um, just to have the 
um, SUVs, which basically took over even the luxury segment as far as, um, you know, the luxury sedans are kind of a dying breed, or are they? I mean, I, I think they're great for what they are, but I can also understand why a lot of people are switching to SUVs for the height, for better visibility, for all-wheel drive, which these are as well. Um, you know, the X-Drive, the 4 the Quattro on the Audis. So, I mean, I, I like this vehicle overall. Um, I think it's more of a performance than luxury, uh, but at the same time, hey, you know what, if you get the 750 or 760 or B7 and uh, let somebody else drive it, shame on you, because that driver is going to have a lot of fun driving your hard-earned money so if you're buying a bmw 7 series make sure you are in the driver's seat that's all i have to say with all seriousness i'm very impressed with the drive of this vehicle um, i think it's definitely a driver's machine um, it does have a nice smooth acceleration um, it goes very quickly it's very responsive you can't feel the gear shifting at the same time it's quiet that i would probably like a little bit more um, growl out of the engine to make it feel even sportier but overall i'm very su pleasantly surprised with this car and uh, uh, i hope that if you buy one and it's the 7 50 or 760 or b7 or even this one you're not going to let anybody drive it because there's a lot of fun behind the wheel so with that i'm going to conclude this uh, walk around uh, slash review of the bmw 740 um, i x drive uh, the luxury sedan from bmw entry level luxury sedan from bmw um, i hope you enjoyed it if you um, like this type of videos please check out my channel if there's anything that you like uh, hit subscribe and hopefully you won't miss any of my uh, videos that are coming up shortly and there's quite a few of them that are being in the work so if you like cars if you like to talk about cars or listen about cars hit like hit subscribe and i hope to see you in my next video cheers wow Alright, I'm gonna take this car back before I get in trouble.